okay it's a rainy night in prague and we're pandemic central still maybe a born harbor cycle calm me down okay so that relies on hess's law which is the energy change for reaction is independent of the pathway taken we're trying to find out the heat of formation of calcium oxide i like to do these in the same order each time and then uh, i don't uh, get lost of course it doesn't matter what order you do them in that's the point of hess's law so i'm going to start with uh, solid calcium and oxygen makes calcium oxide now that is actual actually what we're looking for that is the heat of formation of calcium oxide so heat of formation is making one mole of a substance from the elements in their standard state well i know that uh, calcium oxide is ionic strong bonds so that's going to be a solid i know that calcium uh, is a metal and all metals are solid except for mercury and i don't have the state symbol for oxygen so i have to put that in oxygen's a gas and it's diatomic how can you remember it's diatomic just remember brinkelhoff all of these are diatomic bromine iodine nitrogen chlorine hydrogen oxygen fluorine brinkelhoff now we're going to go around the long way uh, and come back to calcium oxide so we're going to make calcium oxide uh, step by step first of all we're going to atomize the calcium that seems weird why would you want to atomize the calcium well we're going to be doing ionization energies and uh, electron affinities and they only work with atomized substances so that's going to be the enthalpy change of atomization of calcium now I'm going to atomize the oxygen so I'm going to do the cycle first and then I'm going to put the numbers in do the calculation so atomize the oxygen so that's going to be the enthalpy change of atomization of oxygen Uh, so calcium is in group two with two valence electrons and oxygen's in group 16 with six valence electrons and so hopefully you know that the calcium's going to drop off two electrons to the oxygen to make calcium two plus and the oxide iron and they're going to electrostatically attract they're going to stick together to form this ionic bond so i'm going to have to rip off two electrons from the calcium i'm going to do that one electron at a time so i'm going to make calcium plus gas oxygen gas don't forget to include that electron that's the uh, first ionization energy of calcium now i'm going to rip off the second electron of the calcium leaving calcium two plus got my oxygen gas and two electrons so that's the second ionization energy second ionization energy you could put those two steps together i suppose now all these arrows going up are positive and any arrows going down are negative by convention and so I know that when I add my first electron onto the oxygen atom, that's actually exothermic, so it's going to go down. So I'm going to add an electron onto the oxygen to make the O minus ion. That's the enthalpy change for the first electron affinity of oxygen. But I happen to know the second electron affinity is positive, so that's going to go up again. So that's going to give me calcium 2 plus gas, O2 minus gas. 
And that's the enthalpy change for the second electron affinity. Let me just make sure I have got all the state symbols. If you forget one, you lose a point. I've got the charges, I've kept the electrons. Okay, so far so good. So we've got one more arrow to put in. And that arrow is all the way from the bottom, from the calcium oxide. It's a wibbly line. From the calcium oxide going all the way up here. So that's the lattice energy. You've got one mole of ionic crystal and you... Uh, change into its gaseous ions. Well, let's put the numbers in. So we'll do the lattice energy first. The lattice energy of calcium oxide is 3401. Now lattice energy can go up or down, but by tradition we put it up in IB. So it's going to be a positive number. Atomization of calcium was given in the question. That's uh, plus 178. The atomization of oxygen well, that table isn't in the data booklet. So you have to look in the average bond energies, table 11, average bond energies. Now you might be tempted to think, oh, there's oxygen, there's R. You might be tempted to think it's something to do with the 144. Nope, that's single bonds. Oxygen, uh, molecular oxygen has a double bond. So 498, but we're still not done. If you put 498 kilojoules into a mole of oxygen molecules, you break that bond but then you've got two atoms, and I only want one atom. Oh, so I'm going to have to half that number. So it's going to be 498 divided by 2. First ionization energy of calcium. It's 590 plus 590. Second ionization energy of calcium is in the question, 1146. First electron affinity of the oxygen. Well, there's the first and the second. Minus 141 and 753. So that's minus 141. And that's plus 753. And that's all the numbers, except for the unknown. This one here. So Hess's law, in this case, says that if you sum the numbers going in the clockwise direction, it equals the sum of the numbers going in the anti-clockwise direction. That isn't the same as the up numbers equals the down numbers. No, no, you have to sum them clockwise and anti-clockwise. So these are the clockwise arrows here, going around this way, including that cheeky curve. So the sum of those arrows equals the sum of those arrows. So it's kind of the ones going that way equal the ones going that way. All right, let's do that calculation. So that's 2775. And in the other direction, well, I've just got those two arrows there. So that's going to be delta HF, my unknown, plus uh, 3401. 
Let's set those two as equivalent and solve for delta HF, which is our unknown. And that gives me minus 626 kilojoules per mole for my heat of formation for calcium oxide. Well, I looked it up on the internet and the value was pretty close, minus 635. And we're done.